Orang Asli Animal Tale by Lim Boon Liat Siamang Although belonging to separate and distinct tribes, the monkeys and the gibbons had lived together for many years. Their shared home was a lush valley, hidden between the protective shoulders of high mountain ranges. It was a most wonderful place, where underground springs nourished the earth and its inhabitants, where clouds reached down to touch the trees, giving birth to small streams and rivulets, where food was always plentiful. However, life in this jungle paradise was not without its share of problems, for every now and then, little squabbles would erupt between the two tribes. These squabbles, which were usually over the most trivial of matters, stemmed from too many over-inflated egos and a general sense of superiority that each tribe held over the other. On one hand, the Gibbons believed that they were superior to the monkeys and should therefore occupy the best feeding grounds. On the other hand, the monkeys felt that the tailless Gibbons had no place in the community altogether. Because they looked like neither man or monkey, the monkeys were determined to drive the Gibbons out of the territory. Following one particularly heated argument that had boiled over into an all-out brawl, two tribes called upon their common chieftain, the Siamang, to settle the matter. Now, it should be pointed out that although he was tailless like the Gibbons, the Siamang belonged to neither tribe. But since he was larger and more importantly much wiser than any among the two, he was handed the mandate to lead them. After many hours of debate and rumination, the Siamang, wise as he was, could not find a suitable solution to their problem, for the bitter feud between the two groups were more long-standing and deep-rooted than any of them could remember. He could foresee no solution other than that they part and go their separate ways. Only and only if a situation dire enough to warrant it were to arise, would they be allowed to return home. Both tribes respected this decision and left to search for new territories. Not long after this mass exodus, a severe drought devastated the land, bringing hunger and starvation to all its inhabitants, including the exiled monkey and gibbon tribes. It had been months since rain last fell, and harsh sunshine from cloudless skies perched the earth. The trees, which depend on water from below the ground, shed their green crowns to save precious energy and refuse to bear even the tiniest fruit. Soon, word spread among the estranged tribes that the Siamang had considered their return to their old territory. Elated that their leader had intervened once more, both the monkeys and gibbons made their way back to their former lands where sure enough, clear streams were still flowing from the heart of the earth, fruits were stocked in generous proportions, and fresh green leaves hung bountiful upon the branches. Homecoming was a joyous occasion. Laying aside their differences for the moment, both parties feasted together upon the provisions that the evergreen forest bestowed. In the midst of the celebration, a mischievous young monkey detached herself from her mother's arms and climbed down unnoticed, away from the safety of the trees. In the unexpected way fate sometimes intertwines the paths of predators and prey, a passing tiger spotted her while she was playing on the ground, and wasted no time in carrying her away. The blame for this tragedy came to rest squarely on the shoulders of the Siamang. Both tribes agreed for once that the incident would not have happened had he not allowed them to return to their old home. Revenge was demanded for the loss of the innocent. They demanded that the Siamang take full responsibility to hunt down the tiger. However, since the Siamang was old and had a family to care for, they decided that his son would go in his place. The Siamang grew terribly depressed, knowing that his son could not possibly match the strength of the tiger. The Siamang's family was very close-knit, and the child was seldom separated from parent. Still, he decided that he would not give up hope. So early one morning, when the time had come for them to part, the Siamang bid farewell to his son, and imparted to him some final words of comfort and wisdom. He promised to wait for him, and never to give up hope of seeing him again, saying, Until the day you return, my son, I shall call for you every morning and every evening, so that you will know that I am here waiting for you.
The Siamang has not stopped calling since that day. Over time, a pouch had developed under his throat, which allows his voice to resonate for over long distances through the jungle. The desolate cry of the Siamang can still be heard today. Pangolin As most people know, pangolins eat ants. However, what many might not be aware of is the very peculiar method employed by the particular pangolin in this story in order to procure its daily ration of ants. Very simply, it did so by playing dead. It would lie down very quietly on the forest floor close to an anthill, its shiny, fingernail-like scales fully erect. Sensing a tasty meal nearby, the unsuspecting ants would march right up to the very still pangolin in a way ants normally do, crawl up its body and disperse in between its scales. When there was a satisfactory amount of ants on its back, the pangolin would snap shut its scales, hence trapping the unsuspecting ants inside. It would then troll over to the nearest stream, submerge itself in water and open its scales. Hundreds of fat, juicy forest ants would float to the surface. The clever pangolin would then devour the delectable ants by the dozens using its long, sticky tongue. This particular tale takes place one day when, like any other day, the pangolin was playing dead near an anthill situated along a path in the jungle. However, something out of the ordinary happened this day. An elephant came by. The relaxed pangolin barely noticed the tremors as the elephant approached, although it already should have observed the twin track marks on the floor which indicated that this was an elephant trail. This particular elephant was not in a very good mood, for it was very hungry. As most people probably also know, hungry elephants are irritable, and this one was no exception. So the hungry and irritable elephant picked up the pangolin with its enormous trunk and tossed it aside, as one would toss a football. To its surprise, however, the pangolin did not fall off. With its long tail and claws, the pangolin had managed to wrap itself around the animal's trunk and was now holding on with all its might. Feeling even more irritated than before, the elephant marched up to a large-sized tree and with a deafening trumpet, smashed the poor pangolin against it. Still, the pangolin hung for dear life. It had never been so high off the ground, nor struck against a tree before. Not knowing what else to do, it hung onto the elephant's trunk like a leech. The elephant tried and tried again, until the mighty tree shuddered and many of its leaves rained down around them. The pangolin held on tighter each time. Now, thoroughly consumed with rage, the elephant ran amok through the jungle, crashing down trees, startling birds, monkeys and an assortment of creatures unfortunate enough to be hanging around in its path. Still, the brave but very frightened pangolin hung on. This episode went on for two days and two nights. The elephant was utterly exhausted. It had not had any food or water the whole time. Not that it would have been able to even if the thought had crossed its mind. Not with a scaly brown animal wound tightly around its trunk. Finally, the elephant collapsed and died, with the stubborn pangolin still hanging off its trunk. The pangolin was so terrified to notice that it was close to the ground and stationary for once. Much less that the elephant had in fact died. Eventually, the poor pangolin also passed away still clinging onto the elephant's trunk for dear life. It is no wonder then that the scales of this animal, which according to legend actually killed an enormous elephant, are said to possess magical qualities. Made of keratin, the scales are worn by children and adults alike to drive away evil spirits. People also believe that the pangolin meat is very nourishing and has many healing properties. Unfortunately, this belief has only served to endanger the species as many people collect them not only to eat them but also for their ornamental skin.
Mouse Deer Sun Kan Chil was walking in the jungle one day when he came across a bee's nest hung from a low branch. He was fascinated by his find and sat down to contemplate how he could put this nest to good use. So deep in thought was the mouse deer that he didn't notice the tiger which had been creeping up very silently towards him. Aha! laughed the tiger when he crouched directly behind Sun Kan Chil. I finally caught you now, you deceiving liar. Sun Kan Chil almost jumped out of his skin, but quickly managed to regain his composure. He replied as calmly as he could, Oh, you're right, sir. My life is now firmly in your grasp, and you may eat me if you wish. However, he continued, it may be wise if you first seek the blessing of our king, Tikus Bulan, for he has ordered me to guard this golden gong. I should warn you that our majesty is extremely fond of this golden gong and has instructed me to guard it well and not to allow any creature near it. The tiger was quite taken by Sang Kan Chil's story and inquired politely, Where is this great gong that you speak of, Sang Kan Chil? For I have a fine pair of ears and would like very much to ring it and hear for myself the fantastic sound that must surely emanate from a noble instrument. With the tiger having swallowed the bait, Sang Kan Chil grew even bolder. You claim to possess a good set of ears, yet you do not seem to hear its majestic ringing, which is loud and clear and even though it's not been struck yet. The gong gong is hanging right in front of you from the branch of that tree, he said, pointing towards the nest. Please, Sang Kan Chil, pleaded the tiger, I beg you allow me just one strike of this sacred instrument, and I promise that I will savour the sound for the rest of my life. Very well, I see now that your wish is sincere, but let me go and seek the king's permission first, and if it is granted, I shall give you a signal, then you can sound the gong as loudly as you desire. As soon as Sang Kan Chil had retracted a safe distance into the jungle and out of the tiger's reach, he called out to the tiger to strike the golden gong. With one swipe of a heavy paw, the gong fell to the ground with a disappointing thud. As swift as lightning, the agitated beast swarmed all over the surprised tiger, the entire colony vying impatiently amongst themselves for the opportunity to express their displeasure. When Sang Kan Chil heard the roar, he too quickly made his way as far as possible in the other direction. He knew that the injuries the tiger had sustained would merely wheat his thirst for revenge and wisely made sure to keep his distance from the tiger from then on. Today, the mouse deer is rarely found in the deep or dense jungles where it may chance upon the vengeful tiger. Rather, it prefers to live in the vicinity of humans where the chances of this happening are less likely.